All right, so let's start off with the base products then. So the Abur the Boo. Hi, I'm Vicky, welcome back to my channel. And it's time for another Shop My Stash video. Isn't it amazing how quickly these three weeks pass by? We're halfway through April already. This year is just flowing by. It's gonna be summer soon before we know it. So I'm gonna do what I usually do in these videos. I'm gonna talk you through the previous selections, show you some pictures, and then I'm gonna take you over to my makeup storage, makeup cupboard, and pick some products to be working on for the next three weeks. And I'm finding that a three week shot my stash rotation is a good amount of time. So I'm gonna continue with that again in this video. Okay, so let's start off with the base products then. The uh, Boring BB Cream is beautiful. I do still really love that product. It's great coverage. I wore that product in my 1970s makeup video. If you've not seen that, I will link it. And it wore beautifully throughout the rest of the day. It didn't budge, it didn't transfer, it didn't start to sort of separate on my skin. It's just a beautiful product. Now, luckily, the shade Nude suits me, but I know with only four shades in the range, it's not gonna suit everyone, unfortunately. I wish everybody had the opportunity to try how amazing this product is. But I really love it. It's sort of light medium coverage. It is buildable and it's got that luminosity to it, but no dewiness, and I don't like dewiness. So I really enjoyed working with that product for the last three weeks. The Revolution Conceal and Correct in the shade Peach that is too dark for me. I can kind of make it work by putting normal concealer over the top to brighten it, but ideally I wouldn't go for a shade that dark, but that was the only shade peach that they had in their range. But I'm gonna use it up to completion because I think I don't have much left in it. I'm not sure how that's happened because I don't recall using it that often prior to this current Shop My Stash, but I can really sort of see in the tube but it's an okay product in terms of shade range, but in terms of how the product sits and feels, it is actually really nice. It does blend out better with a damp sponge compared to a brush or your fingers, but as a product, shade aside, I think it's quite nice. I do like it. And if you are darker than me, I would recommend that to color correct any dark circles you might have. The e.l.f. concealer. This, this is a nice concealer, but you do have to figure out how best to use it. It's a little bit like the Tarte Shape Tape where it works best if you use it with a damp sponge. If I use my fingers or if I use a brush it doesn't blend out nicely at all. It tends to kind of like just sit on my pores and any kind of texture underneath my eyes but with a damp sponge it blends out lovely. Coverage is pretty good as well, it's not as high coverage as the Tarte Shape Tape but it also doesn't feel as drying. However, if you were to leave that e.l.f. concealer on your face for a minute or two like it is recommended to get full coverage and then go to blend it in, it won't budge. So you do have to work quite quickly with this concealer. Don't let it sit there. Once you've applied it, blend it in straight away. And then moving on to the Patricia Bright palette from Revolution. This is a lovely palette. I've got this on today. I've got the bronzer blush and highlighter on today. I think this is a lovely palette. The bronzer is possibly a touch too red for me, but if I use less of it, I think it works, and hopefully I don't look too muddy with it today. This blusher is lovely. It's, I guess, a little bit darker than what I have seen Pesca by Vive look like. I really like the look of Pesca. It's more of like a mid-toned orange, but I think it's absolutely lovely. And I have enjoyed wearing the Trini blusher, that's in my project pan with this on top to get more of a kind of peachy look. The highlighter is nice, but I think overall in the palette, the highlighter is my least favorite because it is a little bit crumbly. It's not hugely pigmented, which you think would suit me, seeing as I'm not too keen on highlighters anymore. I don't like a big blinding highlighter, but you really do have to build that highlighter up to get, I suppose, the full effect. But altogether, these three products work really well together and I think they do suit my kind of peaches and cream but light slash pale complexion. So really like this product. Okay, so I've moved over so I can put some pictures here as to how the makeup looked. Now, if we start with the Estee Lauder palette, which is the night palette, which has got these purpley shades in, I really like how these colours look and how they look on me. I find that purple, taupey, mauve colours kind of really complement me with my blonde hair, my green eyes. I think they're quite a nice match. 
and I do I do like how the looks in these pictures here look how these eyeshadows in these pictures here look but what I don't like with this palette is the pigmentation you've really got to build these colors up on the eyes and I know some people don't mind that because you can kind of control the pigmentation but even still you don't get a hugely pigmented look at the end of it this purple shade here the second one in is so difficult to blend you put it on your lid and it doesn't budge it's just a really tricky color to blend this one worked quite well as a eyeliner this shade here this kind of taupey brown shade this was my favorite this was a really nice crease color so in these pictures here i am wearing most of the colors i've got that light pink this one here on my lid this looks quite shimmery as does this as does this purple one here next to it they look quite shimmery in the pan but on the lid that they're, they're not that shimmery at all i couldn't really get the shimmer to show up too well and then i've used this dark shade here as a liner so i like how it looks i think it is a pretty look but if i want a purple eyeshadow i'm going to use my bare minerals eyeshadow palette instead because the quality is a lot better than this one I've also got the Arborium BB Cream on my face with the colour corrector and then the Patricia Bright face palette as well. So I really like how my skin looks in this picture. I think it looks quite glowy. And then in these pictures here, I've got that eyeshadow palette on again and I've worn the Peaches and Cream Papyrus eyeliner with it. I love these Peaches and Cream eyeliners. I've spoken about them a few times before on my channel and they're just so pigmented and creamy but they don't budge, they last all day. And this shade here is just really lovely for opening up the eye and making it look a bit bigger. So although I like how these colours look, I'm not impressed with the quality of this palette. Again, the pans are quite small. You really have to kind of use a small brush or your finger. And like I say, if I'm going to go for purple eyeshadows, I'm going to go for my Bare Minerals palette. So with all of that taken into consideration I am going to declutter this product in an upcoming declutter video soon I just I know that if I put this back in my collection I won't use it because I haven't used it before this so it's got to go moving on to the next Estee Lauder palette is this shimmery one here full of like browns and pinks you've got a very shimmery blush there as well and this is the glow palette and I've got it on in these pictures here all of these eyeshadow shades look exactly the same on the eye. The pinks all look the same, the browns all look the same, and again, they're not hugely pigmented. They're very kind of pretty, just a touch of color, but I want more than that. I want more pigment on my eyes than what this palette can deliver, so I don't like these eyeshadows. This blush, however, now, if you've seen any of my prior videos where I talk about blusher, you know I'm not into shimmery blush. I like a matte blush. This blush is very pretty. I put this on expecting not to like it and actually ended up quite liking how it looks in these pictures. But saying that, again, you have to really build up the pigment in this blusher and I don't think this blusher, as pretty as it looks here, is enough to save the whole palette. So again, this is going to be a palette that is going to be decluttered. Because again, if I put it back in my collection, I know I'm not going to use it. I'm not going to reach for it. And I also used my Teddy eyeliner in those pictures. And it's a really nice eyeliner. It's a lovely colour. It's got a little bit of a shimmer to the brown pigment in it. It's not just a pure mud, mid-toned colour brown. It's got real nice warmth to it, a bit of a copperiness to it. Applies easily, doesn't smudge. But I just really struggle wearing eyeliners, pencil eyeliners on my lid. I just don't do it. And then moving on to the third eyeshadow palette that I chose. This is the Revolution Diamonds and Pearls, this palette here. I did get rid of a gold shimmer that made my eyes really sting, but I did that a few months ago. These colours are nice. This is a nice, how would I describe you, dusky pink, dusky rose colour. This is quite a dark brown, so as a crease colour this is probably a little bit too dark for me, but it's nice to make a bit of a smokiness in the outer corner. This shimmer is a lovely colour, but a couple of times when I've worn that, and I'm, I'm wearing it in this picture here, I felt it a little bit on my eyes so I don't know whether it is irritating it a little bit by doing that so I only wore this palette a couple times in this previous shot my stash because of that so I'm not going to get rid of it for now 
because it wasn't an immediate, oh my God, my eyes are burning, I have to wash this off. But it is one that I do have to keep my eye on and see if it will keep irritating me in the future. But overall, it's quite a pretty palette, very complimentary shades. It's nice. And then lastly, the NYX eyeshadow base. I'm really surprised by this product. I think it is brilliant. I think it's a really good dupe for the Urban Decay one. And it's slightly more pigmented as well. It's more ivory beige in tone compared to the Urban Decay one. The Urban Decay one doesn't provide much in terms of pigment to your eyes. It's just more of a base for eyeshadow to go on top of it. Whereas the NYX one does help to neutralise any discoloration on your eyelids a bit more. And it is a little bit easier to apply than the primer potion. It's got a doe foot applicator, whereas the primer potion is a bit like a, a wand. But yeah, I'm surprised by the next one and I would continue to repurchase that one. Don't get me wrong, I do still love my primer potion, but if you're looking for a cheap alternative, Unix eyeshadow base is a good one to go for. Alright, so that was my current Shop My Stash products and how they looked and my thoughts on them. So I've identified a couple of products that I will declutter, which is great because this is the whole point of a Shop My Stash, to work through my collection, see what I like, see if there's stuff I want to declutter. So now let's go and have a look at the rest of my makeup and make my choices for the next three weeks. Okay, so let's make the selections for the next Shop My Stash then. So for primers, I'm not going to choose a primer because I've only got the one that's in my project pan and then this Laura Mercier one. So I'm just going to work on the Trini one that's in my project pan. For foundation, because I've been using my uh, Borean BB cream here, I want to try the It Cosmetics one just to sort of see how that one compares. Now, when I've used this It Cosmetics one in the past, it's been really thick, really heavy, really greasy, and I've tried many different ways of applying it, with and without primer, with a finger, brush, sponge, and really sort of building it up, but I just, ugh, I don't know. Sometimes it looks nice, sometimes I don't like it, so I think I need to spend some time playing with this one. So the next three weeks I can give this one a go and see what my thoughts are about this. I'm also not a huge fan of the shades as well. I'm in light, which is a touch too dark for me, but it's got the right undertone. But if I was to go down a shade to the fair, that is way too pink. So I think they need to have a look at their shades, because that's the thing that I've heard a lot of people say about the It Cosmetics CC Cream. But anyway, let's take this one for my foundation. Right, for concealers, I think I want to go for my Too Faced because I've got the Tarte in my project pan. I've used the Fenty ones before. I've used the Revolution and the Elf one in my most recent Shot My Stash. So I think the only one that's left to try is the Too Faced one, which is this one here, which is in the shade Porcelain. And this is 15 mils. This is a massive concealer. This is half the size of a foundation. And again, the shade ranges on this is a bit dodgy. I mean, this is porcelain, which you would expect to suit your fairest of the fair sort of pink undertone person. But this is a little bit too dark for me, I think. So if I try to show you it, can you see that? That is not porcelain. No way is that porcelain. But anyway, let's give this one a try. See how I get on with this one. Okay, so for the remaining products up here then, I think it's eye primer. So let's go for the Urban Decay Primer Potion. I'm very nearly out of this, so hopefully concentrating on this eyeshadow primer in this Shop My Stash, I will be done with it. So let's include this one, and I love this product as well. This is so good. Eyeliners, I think I just want to go for a liquid one this time, a liquid black eyeliner. This is the KVD Tattoo Liner. I think with the eyeshadows that I want to choose, a black eyeliner will be best, and this is the only black one that I have, so let's go for this one. Alright, so let's think about bronzer then. Now, I have the bronzer that is in my e.l.f. duo here. I've also got the one that was in my Patricia Bright palette that I've just been working on, but I think I want to focus on my Project Pan one, because I'm still undecided about what I want to do with that one, so I don't want to include another bronzer to be working on so I'm just going to stick to the Clarins one that is in my project pan. Blusher, I think I'm going to go for my Milani Luminoso one. I bought this summer autumn last year and I've not really played about with it too much 
So I think I want to give this one a go and see what my thoughts are on this one. Because I can't really remember. I think I liked it. But we'll see what I think after these three weeks. So let's go for that one. Highlighter. I think I have to go for my Becca highlighter in Champagne Pop. Because I have not worn this yet. I've only swatched it. I've not actually applied this to my face. <laughs> So I think I need to give this one a go and see what I think about it and see whether it was worth breaking my no-buy for. Okay, eyeshadows. I don't think I want to include a palette. I think I want to have a look at some of the singles that I own. So I think... Yeah, this one. This Kiko one. It's quite gold. It's very pretty. It's a bit like a less vibrant version of this NARS one here. It's really lovely this Kiko one but I don't tend to wear it that often. If I'm going to go for this type of shade I'll probably go for the NARS one or my Naked Heat or one of my Soph palettes. And I've got too many singles so I want to give this one a go and again like with all the other makeup just see what I think about it. See if I want to keep it in my collection. I'm also going to do the same with this Kiko palette here as well. These are a couple of brights, a green and a blue, but if I'm going to go for brights, I'm going to choose this palette. So I want to see if these two in the Kiko palette are as vibrant as these ones. And there's also a bit of a... What is this? Like a dusky brown taupe kind of colour? I'm not really too sure how to describe that one. And I don't really wear it, so again I want to see if this one is a shade worth keeping. So I've got my four Kiko singles now. And I want to pair them with this Makeup Geek palette here, full of their foiled singles. I really love these colours, so I don't think I'm going to be getting rid of any of these shades. It's just that I think these go well with the Kiko ones. And the other Kiko one as well. It works quite well with that middle row. So I think that is it for my selections for this next Shot My Stash. Alright, I hope you enjoyed watching that video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Bye guys.